Hello, and I hope that you are well. Um, today we're just gonna sit around and um, talk a little bit about HPP, known also known as hypokalemic periodic paralysis. That's quite a mouthful. Um, specifically the familial kind. And um, I'm just going to kind of give a personal narrative as to um, my family's experiences with it. I apologize for the noise in the background. That is our kitten, Lily. She is very excited. Um, she has a new toy. So again, I apologize. Um, I do have to begin by saying that I am not a medical professional in any way. Um, I am just sharing our personal story, our personal experiences um, with the hopes that it can help someone. Um, HPP is a very rare diagnosis. Um, it's a genetic mutation that um, is often not diagnosed or misdiagnosed. Um, and when people are diagnosed with it and have issues or have to go in for emergency purposes, a lot of medical professionals are unfamiliar with it. And unfortunately, my experience has been there are very few that are very familiar with it because it is so rare. So we're here to try to hopefully help someone um, on their journey through our journey. Um, I think the more voices, the the more strength. So um, I'm just going to grab myself some hot water. Yeah, I don't drink coffee and I didn't feel like tea today. So hot water with my cat lover cup. And um, we will begin. So like I said, um, I married into a family that has um, the genetic mutation for positive HPP cases. Um, and what that means is, is that um, to be diagnosed with the type of HPP that um, my husband and my daughter have, you have to have a mutation within your genes. And the way we found out that my daughter had it, um, we tested her through genetic testing through a children's hospital that was local to us um, before she would be showing so that we would be prepared in case she did. Um, my husband, however, um, found out because he started having issues. And um, then his family members then got tested after the fact because there were things going on that um, they could never explain or the doctors just kind of overlooked. Um, people didn't take seriously. And we found out that um, it it is genetically truly passed down within his family. I mean, again, the only way to get it is through genetic mutation like or the passing of a gene. Um, but when my husband was diagnosed, that wasn't even quite um, figured out in the medical profession is my understanding. So um, we are lucky to live in an area of the country that has um, a lot of hospitals and research facilities around. We're near a lot of colleges that have good medical programs. So there has been a lot of research in our area um, considering how rare the genetic disorder is. I'm gonna refer to it as a genetic disorder um, just because I don't look at it as a disability. Um, and that's just me personally. Um, many people do though. So um, again, so to be diagnosed with HPP, there are, I think that the sure diagnosis is through genetic testing um, that, because you have to have mutations of certain genes. And just because you show that you, that you are a carrier does not mean that you're going to present. So you could be, or people within your family could be carriers and no one could have presented with any of these symptoms. And then um, suddenly a male child gets it and he presents because he has a, a greater um, percentage of, of showing actual symptoms if he's a male versus a female. Um, so our journey with my daughter has been pretty straightforward. Um, she was genetically tested and it came back as a carrier. It doesn't usually present in females until we hit like preteens, puberty. Um, and there's no way of knowing if, if a child's going to present or not. You kind of just have to wait for it to happen, which is terrifying. 
Um, so that being said, if you have, if you already have a diagnosed case in your family, it just makes sense to, um, get your child genetically tested. Our insurance did not cover the testing. I have really good insurance. I'm, um, very blessed to say that I have good insurance and it did not cover the testing. So that is something that you need to save up for. We did not get a full panel done. We, because we knew what we were looking for. We were, because we knew my husband had it. We knew his mother had it. We knew his sister was a carrier. So we knew what we were looking for. Um, if you don't know what you're looking for, you do have to get, because there's various mutations. We knew what mutation he already had. So we knew exactly what we were looking for, um, which brought the cost down, but it can be costly. Um, some signs, if you're, like I said, if you're, uh, if you're looking for a child, there wouldn't be any signs until they had their first episode. Um, things that could potentially happen in their first episode are weakness, extreme weakness. Um, they'll, it could just be hands though, arms. They may not even realize at first that something's happening. They may try to move their legs and say that they can't. Um, and this can be quite scary if they're not ready for it and if you're not ready for it. Um, so know that if your child was going through this and they were diagnosed, that these are all quite normal things. The weird thing or the great thing, depending on how you look at it, but HPP is it's a very, very um, individual. So two people can have exactly the same mutation and their um, their episodes can be very different. And one person's episodes can vary from time to time. Um, so the first episode is always the scariest to a degree. <laughs> and we'll get more into that in a later date. But um, yes. So again, if your child is, is having issues with like muscular problems. Um, a lot of people put this under muscular dystrophy. Um, it's not the same, but that's usually specialist wise. You go with a neurologist that specializes in muscular like disorders. Um, because that's what HPP has. Um, so again, it's a genetic mutation and it deals with the loss of, um, potassium your body, um, something triggers and everyone has different triggers. Something triggers your body to lose potassium and then you need to replenish that potassium. And if you don't replenish it, it will be continued to be lost. So in short, um, it's genetic. Uh, it's a loss of potassium, which then causes muscles to stop being able to move. And, um, Eventually, if not treated and if a severe episode occurs, you can have larger issues because of all the different organs and what have you in your body that are muscular. But again, that's on extreme circumstances. Um, I don't want to scare anyone. So that being said, um, my daughter was, like I said, my daughter was diagnosed with this. Um, she is now 11. She has had her first episode. She's had several episodes. We're actually um, trying to find out her triggers at this point. And, um, she's able to function as a normal 11 year old. Um, we do have episodes. We have had one where we had to go home early from school. We've had some issue with after school activities, but we'll get into that at a later date. Um, but this is not the end of the world. Um, it's all about managing and working with, with what you're given and knowing that um, there are answers. So I hope this is helpful. Um, I'm going to do a series of these because I could ramble on <laughs> about this for a while. But again, this is just our first one. It's what is HPP and um, how is it really diagnosed in children? And I can only tell you about my case. Again, I'm not a medical professional. Um but if you do have a child that's complaining of weakness um, in their legs, arms, um, this could be something to ask about.
All right. I hope you have a wonderful day and we will talk soon. Have a great day. Bye.